To be honest, I put off a lot of good games, shows, and other pieces of entertainment due to the fan bases surrounding them. Games like Undertale, fighting games, and anime and comic books in general. Sure, I've played some of these games in the past, but I wasn't that interested in them. And when I was interested, I was usually one of the rabid fans myself. Yes, I have to admit, back in the day, I was one of those kids who was obsessed with FNAF, anime, and Undertale. Yes, it still haunts me to this day. So, as an ex-part of the rabid fan base person, I would like to say that you shouldn't put off watching things or playing games just because of the bad fan base. In this video, I'm going to talk about my experiences and give reasons as to why you shouldn't do this. I hope this ends up helping you isolate the fan base from the piece of entertainment. Before I start the video though, I just want to say two things. One, this video is just my opinion. Two, I hate saying this and I only say it in longer videos, but if you enjoyed the video, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe. I'll start with Undertale. Yes, this game has been praised a lot and I have to say that it is a good game. But I've been condemning it for years because back in 5th grade I was obsessed with the game. Of course, as time passed I realized how laughable I was being and just stopped. But I didn't touch Undertale again for years and I condemned the game just because of its dog shit community. But like I've said, turns out if you just ignore the fanbase and don't go to the game subreddit or something, or just don't go to the comment section of any Undertale video, you'll have a lot more fun! It's a good cartoony game with the unique concept of not killing or attacking enemies. It also has some 4th wall breaks, which is something I just love. Seriously, developers, please keep adding 4th wall breaks into your games, if it fits the occasion. This theme of just ignoring the fanbase will be the main point of this video, since it is the reason why I managed to find new pieces of entertainment to watch or play. Moving on to the second thing I mentioned at the beginning of the video, fighting games. I know it's kind of weird. Fighting games? Why? Well, it's because of the competitive nature of them. I don't know why, but it just bugs me when a lot of people act like You have to play the battle, play the battle, play this overpowered character to win, you have to. No, you don't have to listen to them, unless you're playing competitively. So I once again ignored the overcompetitive community that just loves miners. No, miner- uh, anyways. I ignored the community and just decided to play fighting games casually. And yes, I know that fighting games have to have some sort of competitiveness to make them popular, because a lot of people play games that way. I don't blame them, it is fun playing competitively, but I'm just saying that I don't like playing that way. I don't hate competitive players. For me, not watching any tier list videos or competitive players and just playing the game casually made the game a lot more fun than just playing competitively, though that is, once again, just my opinion. I've played against NPCs and real players who kicked my ass a lot, of course, although playing against my friend was a lot more fun and annoying. I know you're watching this video. Stop playing fast. Please, I can't play against them. To any competitive fighting game players, do what you do. It is really impressive seeing you guys play this game amazingly, but it's just not for me. Also, to anyone watching this video, don't let this deter you from playing fighting games. A lot of people play casually instead of competitively. I usually play Guilty Gear, as you can probably tell from the background footage, and I haven't seen anyone completely sweat in a match. So those hardcore competitive sweat players you see that say, You can't play this character, he is too low tier, are just the minority. <sighs> Here we go. People are either going to be on my side for this or just DDoS me and kill me 5 seconds after I upload this video, but I'm gonna say it. I left this part for last because I know a lot of people don't like Eastern media. So if you are one of those people, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are not, however, let's get started. I was an anime obsessed child a few years back. Actually, obsessed is way too strong of a word. I didn't talk to other people about it. I was just that introverted weeb kid. I didn't watch any movies, I just watched anime, and yes, I cringe every time I look back. So after I left that phase, I took a DD Paladin WoW to never touch anime or interact with its fanbase again. What annoyed me so much about the fanbase and the media in general was the fanbase being so toxic and also attacking anyone who didn't fit their opinions. For example, No, how can you watch the anime dubbed? You can't do that! Another thing that annoyed me was the blatant, needless oversexualization. Okay, I get the culture is different and I completely respect that, but you don't need to, like, sexualize a 5 year old child, what the hell? After all of this, guess what series got me to give anime and manga a second chance? Yes, it's Berserk. I still haven't finished Berserk, but it is undoubtedly one of the best comic book slash manga series I've ever read. To the two people watching this video who don't know what Berserk is, Berserk is a dark fantasy manga written by the late Kentaro Mira. Sorry if I butchered his name, I, I'm not good at pronouncing Japanese stuff. It is one of the best-selling manga series according to Wikipedia, and the amount of work this man has put into Berserk is just insane. Look at these panels. Getting to have Berserk got me back into anime, it simply had an amazing story. The characters were written perfectly and this made me realize that good stories were to be found in anime. So I also watched things like Cowboy Bebop and more recently Attack on Titan. I was against watching Attack on Titan at first because I thought it was yet another modern anime which was just going to be needless fan service over needless fan service, but it was anything but. The show had zero fan service, and yes, I was extremely confused. By the way, yes, it also had a really good story and I recommend it to everyone watching this video. 
Even though I had cooked my anime lover face, there was one show that I never stopped loving, and that was Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Alright, disagree with me if you want, but in my opinion, this this is one of the best shows ever written, and it deserves to be up there with Breaking Bad. Even though I've praised Berserk, Attack on Titan, and Full Metal Alchemist, I have to say that they all have bad fans. For Berserk, there are people saying Griffith did nothing wrong. For Attack on Titan, there are people making terrible memes. And for Full Metal Alchemist, there are, unfortunately, people positive bombing the show on IMDb, and they are doing this to boost it to the top of the list. And this has funnily led to people negative bombing the show to counter the people positive bombing the show. All of this brings me back to the main point I made at the start of the video. Ignore the fans, isolate them from the piece of entertainment. Yes, there are always going to be annoying and cringy people that like the stuff you also like, but you don't have to join the fandom just to like something. And just because the show has bad fans, doesn't mean it is bad. You can just like it or love it and move on, which is something that took me an embarrassingly long time to learn. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed me rambling about things for a few minutes straight. If you did, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe. And don't forget, if someone approaches you and starts quoting fictional characters as waifus or husbandos, you are legally allowed to quote Warhammer 40k quotes back at them, like BURN HERETIC!